All right, so now let's look at uh, eukary the eukaryotic cell division, right? So the thing I said about eukaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells are cells with a nucleus. Uh, they can be single or multicellular. Uh, most likely that you're familiar with are eukaryotic cells. These are cells that uh, they have a nucleus. So these are plants and animals, fungi, and protozoans, uh, protists. These are single-celled organisms like uh, amoebas, and, uh, the thing that causes malaria, okay? Uh, several chromosomes, like the smallest number of chromosomes they find is like six. So anyway, look at eukaryotic chromosomes. Remember, uh, when we look inside of a cell, what we're going to see inside that cell is chromatin most of the time. And these are loose fibers of DNA and histones. And histones are just proteins that the DNA winds itself around. This is a form of DNA when the cell is not actively dividing. And so when the cell is going to divide, we package up that, those chromo uh, that DNA into chromosomes. And chromosomes are coiled strands of DNA and histones. All right, and as I mentioned before, chromosomes carry the genes. And they're essentially like packets of DNA. And I think I've talked about this before, like if you're gonna move, right, you put everything into boxes uh, before you move uh, and because it's easier to move stuff, right? So that's what the chromosome is. It's packaged up DNA, all right? So we humans, we have 46 chromosomes. Uh, cats have 38 chromosomes. Chickens have 78 chromosomes. And what I want to you guys to take away from that is uh, the number of chromosomes doesn't tell us much of anything about the organism. It just tells us how many packets of DNA it has. And that's pretty much it. Now, all those numbers I gave to you, 46 for humans, 38 for cats, and 78 uh, for chickens, this is what we call the diploid number. And the diploid number is a cell condition in which there are two sets of chromosomes. And the diploid, uh, so those uh, cells that have the diploid number are what we call somatic cells. Those are typical body cells, like a skin cell, a brain cell, a nerve cell. Well, a brain cell and a nerve cell are the same thing, uh, but a muscle cell, and you get what I'm saying. All right? Where these sets come from is that you get one set of chromosomes from your mom and one set of chromosomes from your dad. All right? Another number associated with chromosomes is the haploid number. And the haploid number is a cell condition in which there is only one set of chromosomes. Uh, and so that is found in gametic cells. So the gametic cells, we're talking about these could be either egg or sperm cells. And so we essentially have uh, the number that we have in our diploid number. So for humans, uh, our diploid number is 46, so our haploid number is 23. For cats, their diploid number is 38, so their haploid number is 19. Uh, for chickens, their diploid number is 78, so their haploid number is 39, all right? So uh, we essentially make it in half, and that's what we're gonna give off uh, in an egg or sperm cell, and then at fertilization, those come together and restore that diploid condition in our offspring, all right? Now, if we look at cell division, cell division is essentially two processes to it, all right? One process is cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm, which we'll get to after we talk about mitosis. And the other is called karyokinesis. All right, so karyokinesis means division of the nucleus. All right, if you break these words down, cyto means cell, kinesis means movement. With karyokinesis, karyo refers to nucleus, and kinesis means movement. All right, so there are two types of karyokinesis. One is mitosis, uh, and that's the division of a nucleus into two genetically identical daughter nuclei. So in that situation, we start off with one diploid nucleus, we're gonna end up with two diploid nucleus, and uh, diploid nuclei. And that's how we make somatic cells, is through mitosis, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Next is meiosis, and this is a division of a diploid nucleus into four haploid nuclei, all right? And through meiosis is how we make gametes. And we'll talk about meiosis in the next chapter, all right? So, the next thing I want to talk about is DNA replication. In DNA replication, that's where DNA is going to make a copy of itself. And this is going to occur before mitosis or meiosis uh, occurs. So we're going to already have that DNA copy, all right? And so what's going to happen in this process here is the chromosome doubles, all right? So I'm choosing my words here very carefully. This is a chromosome before DNA replication. This is what it looks like after DNA replication, 
all right? And so what we have here at the end, and this is just condensed up DNA down here, this is more loose, all right? So what we have here at the end is that we have this whole thing right here is now called a duplicated chromosome. And this side is called a sister chromatid of this side. So this is a sister chromatid of this, all right? And what I'm saying here is that this side, I have no idea how I did that, but uh, this side has the same exact genetic information on it as this side. So what I'm saying here is if you had a gene for hairy toes right here, you would have a gene for hairy toes right there as well, okay? So these two sister chromatids are eventually going to separate from each other in mitosis. All right, so that's what the next slide is going to show. Now, this part right here that's holding to these two sister chromatids together, that is called the centromere, all right? So that's a region where the sister chromatids are held together uh, right there. That's the centromere, all right? If we look at this next slide here, this is showing DNA replication. We have that one, uh, that chromosome there, and it doubles. So this is one chromosome now with two sister chromatids on it, all right? And so what we're gonna do here in mitosis, we're gonna separate those sister chromatids from each other. And we'll get to that in the next video.